Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Luna SPG and this is an impression video of Void Terrarium 2. Now I did not try Void Terrarium 1, so I just jumped into the into this game knowing absolutely nothing about it, but I was attracted by the you know the graphics in the entire ensemble and I thought was you know really cool. Um, in this game you play with a robot named Robbie and you ba basically babysit the last human on earth named Toriko. Now, Toriko needs to live in a special environment, which is closely related to a bottle, and you need to provide for her. So, in this game, you go out into the wasteland, you gather resources, and you come back and you prepare things to, you know, keep her alive. Uh, one of the things that the factory AI uh, tells you to do is to prepare a party for her, because it's been, uh, I don't know, a couple of years, maybe one year or two years, I'm not really sure. So, you go out and you do that. Now, to my surprise, this is a roguelike. Now, in a roguelike, if you don't know, you have to go out and die a lot. And this is the same thing. Now, one of the cool things that this game has is that it has a little bit of repetition, uh, which is a good and then a bad thing, and I'll get to it. And every level is procedural generated, which means there are no two levels alike. Every time you repeat the mission, the level essentially changes. But you do have floors, which is like... I don't know, stages if you could call them that, that between each one. And the first one that you go, you have three stages, and the second one that I got, I had four. Now the controls are rather simple, you have the up, down, left, right, and you have only two buttons, one to attack and one to rush, and you have another one where you can rush on the same spot and have, uh, uh, you know, you, you deplete your stamina, but you regain your health. In that sense, it's very simple. On the other hand, the commands are rather confusing. The movement that the robot has is not as perfect as, you know, maybe you would see in Zelda, uh, if you've ever played in the GameCube or maybe on the Switch. The movement of the, uh, the robot is very jaggy, as you can say, and once you get attacked, you cannot run away. I mean, the enemies just get glued to you and they will attack incessantly. When you attack, uh, there's always an interval between your attack and the other and the enemy attack. It's not like uh, if you have an auto fire, which I did try out for this version, uh, that you can just press the button and you can hit the enemies faster than they can hit you. No, it doesn't work like that. There's intervals between your attacks and their attacks, so you will so always end up losing a bit of health every time you encounter an enemy. Now, when you reach the end of each uh, area, you come back or you die, or one of the two. Uh, the resources that you've gathered during your playthrough are turned into the resources that are required to craft whatever it is necessary. There are four of them, and uh, whatever the materials you have, they get transformed at the end of the level into the materials that you need. In the menu at the bottom, you can actually see what resources you'll get for each material that you are now have in your inventory. Uh, so, gathering a lot of materials and wasting them on missions to try to get to the end of the level is actually not a good thing. You will always want to preserve as much as you can to reach the end of each level and each floor. The thing is, you can pretty much not finish any level, any stage, um, without a weapon. Now, the first time I actually cleared the first area, the first wasteland, was because I got a hammer and I did, and subsequently I then had to find a uh, sword, I also found a sword and then a hammer in some of them, but you do not get to keep them. Another thing you can't do is that you cannot craft materials to take with you. Um, maybe further ahead you can do this. Right now everything is just dependent on the RNG of what the level design will appear. If it appears with good, good materials and you do have a weapon, it's fine. If not, then you will struggle and you will die and then you have to repeat everything again. Also, without a weapon, it is kind of hard to see if you are hitting the enemy because their movement, their, the movement of the graphic is so small that you really have no distinction between if you're hitting or not. The only way you can tell is because of the enemy, you know, the numbers will appear and his health will be going down, uh, as will yours, but there's no clear movement unless you have a weapon and then you can clearly see the weapon hitting, hitting it and having that registration. Another thing that happens while you go into this expedition is, is that your level will be going up. For each level that you go up, you can decide between two uh, abilities that you can have. You can have uh, uh, more defense, or more offense, more damage, or have more space to put in your inventory, so that you can just progress there. But the level goes back to zero once the expedition is over. Once you either die, or you finish the, the, the area, 
it will go bad soon, so you don't get to keep that, you know, that impressive level that you get where you are do, doing more damage, having more defense. That thing does not keep when Sula finishes the expedition. Also, and this might be just because of me, because I only reached the second um, area, the second wasteland, is that once you reach the second area, you cannot go for there directly. You still have to do the first area and the second one. So, yeah, if you die in the second area, you have to then repeat the first area to then jump on the second area, and you have to level up all over again to then go to the second one. I don't know if this is something that is supposed to be like this. Uh, maybe further ahead, once you clear the second area, you can jump directly into that area. But right now, it is a little bit frustrating to go to, through the entire areas of the entire expedition's zones just to get to the level where you were at. Another thing, and this was kind of frustrating for me also, was that the enemies don't drop anything. So there's no point in trying to kill as much enemies as you want, because they will drop no materials for you to then use later to craft anything. So you might as well try to avoid them as much as you can. If you have to fight, fight. If not, just flee and try to gather the materials to reach the next floor, and then reach the next level, and then just, you know, turn back. You cannot about abort the mission and say okay i'm finishing up to this i'm gonna go back if you try and do that the robot will just explode it'll be like a self-imposed death and then you get back to the factory so with all this said there's good graphics it's a nice environment there's only two button action there's a lot of repetition there's a lot of um, procedural generated levels which is there are no two play two plays are the same and your level up progress is cool to find to figure out what you can do uh, but then everything goes back to zero once you back to, fa to the factory and you die a lot and I do mean a lot how do I feel about it well I did not enjoy it uh, I, I'm not a, a roguelike aficionado I had never played one and if this is the the gist of them and you know, just repeat the same thing over and over again until you do it it's not for me it's pretty much like a soulsborne you know i tried one i tried on one to uh, platinum one just to see how it was and i figured out it wasn't for me now despite being a fast-paced game and you can repeat the things fast um it feels a little bit like i was playing warframe again where you have to repeat the same mission over and over again and hope that the drops the rng is in your side so it's not really oriented to your, for your skill but it's the game that's controlling you the outcome of your gameplay and i did not enjoy that i also didn't enjoy that i couldn't keep my level for instance if i finished the, the first expedition at level five i didn't get to keep that level if i found a weapon i could keep the weapon if i followed to the second stage and, and, and then i died i had to go back to the first stage and do the thing all over again so yeah i didn't enjoy it i like the setting and i think the characters are are cute and uh, there's definitely a niche audience for this because this is the void terrarium 2 which means they made a one and people enjoyed it much so they can make a second but it's just not for me uh <laughs> after all this frustration one of the things that really got me aggravated was that at the end at really at the end of the of the, of the um, demo that i played i had to tap the torico on the head to say okay well done and finish it and i couldn't do that the game bugged fortunately i could restart it and i started at that same level i didn't have to do any more gameplay i just had to tap her and finish the demo like that but yeah i definitely think this had, had a lot of red flags for me so it's not for me maybe you it's for you i mean feel free to try it out if you guys like real likes if you like the aesthetic please do but for me it's not for you maybe if you actually enjoy this game the game is out now they came out on march 3rd so enjoy it leave a comment to just the saying what you think about it if you play it or if you play the first one so that's it i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like and subscribe and as always have a great game guys